Hey guys, welcome to my new historical beauty series where I'm going to recreate the hair, makeup and somewhat of the style of historical beauty icons. So today I want to start off with Empress Elizabeth of Austria-Hungary, also known as Sissy. So like I mentioned, Sissy was the Empress of Austria and Queen of Hungary in the 19th century. And she is considered by many to be the most beautiful Empress in European history. And she put a lot of effort into looking this beautiful. When she first came to the court in Vienna, Elizabeth had a lot of trouble um, adjusting to the very rigid rules and kind of behavioral guidelines that were set there and she did conform very well but she struggled with it and she developed an obsession with outward appearance and beauty. Elizabeth had many of the symptoms that we would nowadays ascribe to anorexia. Uh, she was pretty tall, she was 1 meter 72 which was very tall for the time and she maintained her weight at a maximum of 50 kilos so she was very slender she would also wear very tight corsets and it is said that at a certain point her waist measured only 16 inches in circumference which is very very tiny she is also reported to have binge eaten and then you know held a severe diet to compensate for that she went to great lengths to maintain her own ideal of beauty she would also spend loads and loads of time on different beauty rituals and regimes so I have chosen a look today that is, I think, pretty iconic for the um, young Elizabeth of Austria. I have done a hairstyle which I found in one of the paintings. Well, paintings and photographs of her are always taken from the front, so it's really hard. I believe I found one photo that was taken from the back. So it is pretty hard to kind of reconstruct what would have gone on in the back, but this is just my guess. So this is the look I went for, but I am going to start with the makeup. Now, Sissy apparently did not wear any makeup. She wanted to exhibit her natural beauty and she enhanced this natural beauty, not with makeup and cosmetics, but with beauty treatments. So she would try different creams and tonics and waters from the pharmacy and also her handmaidens would sometimes mix things for her and she would apply this during the night or just for a couple of minutes during the day. And despite all of this effort, she did not allow her portraits or photos taken anymore after the age of 32 to maintain this kind of ideal beauty all the way into history. So since she didn't wear any makeup, I am going to keep my makeup look very natural. I'm just going to apply a base of foundation to make the skin look flawless, as her does in the paintings. Blend this out really well and then I'm going to go over a couple of spots with some concealer just to make my skin look even more flawless. So I'm going to cover up my dark circles Add a little bit of redness I have around my nose and then a little spot that I have here. And when that is done, I'm going to powder everything off with a pressed powder to make it stay. Then I'm going to take a little bit of a bright pink blush and I'm going to apply that on my cheeks in a shape that I've kind of seen in some of her paintings, which I think was just the artist's take a little bit of liberty to make her more youthful. But uh, yeah, this is definitely what it looked like, so I'm going to apply my blush in those places as well all the way down my cheeks. Then I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. Her eyebrows look perfectly well groomed in the paintings and photos. So I'm just going to fill mine in to look kind of more like hers. Her eyebrows are pretty straight, so I'm going to do that with mine as well. And when that is done, I'm just going to apply a very thin layer of mascara on my top lashes to make my eyes look a little bit darker. Now her lips always look very healthy and kind of tinted in photographs and paintings so I am going to color mine in with just a little bit of a lip stain to keep that natural looking effect. So that is the makeup done and that was easy enough so now we're going to move on to the hair. <laughs> Elizabeth had quite memorable hair I guess you could say. Her hair was absolutely amazing. It was ankle length, very thick, very long, shiny, beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous hair. Apparently Four or five people were required every day to dress her hair and it would take them two hours to do. So, of course, I'm just here on my own. Um, I may take two hours about that just because I'm doing the work of five people. Um, I don't have ankle length hair, so I need to work with what I have. Now, I am pretty certain that although her hair is very long, there may be a little bit of extension woven into there because one of her braids 
just the ones that go across her head, containing four times the hair that I have on my entire head. So yeah, she may have been cheating a little bit with the braids. I am definitely going to cheat big time. I am going to use two full sets of extensions. I'm going to use my super long extensions on the bottom half of my hair and then I'm going to use the shorter extensions or the extensions that are my own hair length on the top half of my hair. So when those are in I am going to separate out two sections in the front that are going to make my crossing over top of the head braids. <laughs> so I'm just going to clip those away for now. And then all the remaining hair I'm going to divide into four sections and I'm going to braid all of these four sections. Now when you are braiding make sure that you don't pull them forward before you braid the base otherwise your braids will swoop forward and it will make weird kind of textures in the back which you don't want so be sure to braid them really downwards as far as you can as far as your arms will reach before bringing them forward to finish the braid. So when all four braids are done I'm going to fluff them out so I'm going to tuck at the sides a little bit to make the braids flatter and wider and thus make them look even fuller. Okay, so now it is time to let down the front pieces that I had separated out and I'm going to braid these two as well and this time I'm going to braid backwards and downwards. And when both braids are done, again, fluff them out a little bit to make them thinner and wider. And now I'm going to cross them over my head. Now I want them to stand up vertically so that they look larger and I believe they stand up like this in her pictures as well. So I'm going to turn them that way cross them over each other and then pin down each end at the base of the other one. Oh, and I'm not crossing them over in the middle like I usually do. Okay, so when that's done, we are going to work on the most tricky part, which is the back. I am going to double up the two braids in the center. So every time take the ends and pin them underneath the base of their own, like their own base. And when that is done, I'm going to take one braid and lay the two sides or the two halves next to each other and start pinning them together so that they lay next to each other and are stuck together like that. So that they kind of form one thick long braid I'd say. So just stick a bobby pin through one side of one braid and one side of the other braid to make them stick together. And I just leave the pin just sticking out in the back. It's not very comfortable but hey this is not a hairstyle for comfort. So do that all the way down the length until you reach the loop. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other braid. So then when I have two loops stuck together, I'm going to stick these two loops together. <laughs> so again, do the same thing, just pin your kind of plaques of braid together to form one giant braid. So when they are stuck together, I am going to take one of the braids from the outside and again, just pin it to this giant braided thing that we already have. And when you reach the bottom, you're going to wrap the braid around the bottom. So you're going, to, you're going to kind of make this end this off nicely. So just wrap the braid around the bottom and pin it like that. And when you reach the thinner kind of ends of your braids, which don't look very nice anymore, just tuck them underneath the plaque of braids and pin them down there. And then do the same thing with the other side. This is the very last braid. So again, just pin it to this giant braid thing that we have and then wrap it around the bottom and tuck the end. And that is essentially the hairstyle. Now I decided to add a little bit of a crown because we are doing an empress after all and in many of the pictures she's wearing either a veil or a crown or a crown and a veil or some kind of hair jewelry. So I just went for this tiny little crown. Not as big of an empress as she was. <laughs> and for the rest of my accessories I just went for this pearl necklace. She wears a lot of pearls, diamonds, um, as befits an empress. Of course I don't have anything that matches that but just this type of feeling is really good and for clothing um, I'd say go for something that is off shoulder which was just the style in the 19th century especially of noble ladies. It was very fashionable back then and in many of her portraits I'd say most of them you can see her with off shoulder dresses. And that is how to recreate the look of Empress Elizabeth of Austria Hungary. Now I would like to ask you to leave in the comments your requests for historical beauty icons that you would like me to recreate the look of in this series. So leave your comments below and I will pick them out to um, see which one I'm going to do next. So I want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more because there's definitely more coming. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!